Hey Lan, hi folks, it's Lev. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who are new and use hearing pronouns, I never filmed at this angle before in my house. Heartbreak. Heartbreak is a very interesting thing and it's a very interesting experience. And the worst heartbreak of my life so far, hopefully nothing like that ever happens again, happened 13 months ago, so just over a year. And a few days ago, before filming this video, I went to see my therapist about it because I thought I had fully let it go and I thought I could and I thought I had moved on from it. And maybe I have. And maybe I'm just punishing myself for being human. And that's what I want to talk about today and tell you what I mean. And what the session with my therapist gave me was essentially a key. And I'm going to talk about that in this video. So just general brief context, the relationship lasted, we dated, me and this person dated for seven months from March last year to October. Um, they broke up me. They they broke up with me over text. Um, there was a lot of anger. There was a lot of resentment, and there was a lot of anger for like a lot of this year as well. A lot of anger, a lot of resentment. Not just resentment towards them, but resentment towards myself, and that took a lot of internal work, going to therapy, um, and learning from experience and seeing it as seeing the whole relationship as um a learning opportunity and highlighting a lot of things about myself that i needed to work on personally and my actions and behaviors that in a way enabled their behaviors and also enabled the not so good and not so ideal things to continue happening. So I highlight a, a lot of things about myself that I wouldn't have known otherwise if I was in that relationship. Yep, a lot of internal work. Um, very different person to who I was a year ago. Yet I can't stop thinking about them and also feel certain emotions when I think about different things that happened in the relationship and I thought I'd moved on and I thought I was fully close with this chapter, like fully close with it, that I wouldn't feel emotions coming in and out of my life about them and what, what happened and also thoughts about it. And through the way I sort of like have processed it, there's one key thing that was missing and I've been basically in a way walking around in the realm of dating and approach to future dating and relationships with chains around my legs because of fear of what happened in the past happening again. Even though now I'm a very different person to who I was 12 months ago. And I'm sitting in this spot in my house because it represents trapping, entrapment. I've sort of entrapped myself based on the way I've currently, like I've, until I saw my therapist, which I'm still breaking out of. And the way I've seen moving on, I've been way too harsh with myself. And I've been punishing myself for feeling emotion, being like, why do I keep feeling emotions? Why do I keep thinking about this person? I clearly haven't moved on. And I sort of feel annoyed at myself for feeling emotions, even though it's very human. And that even after a year has passed, the memories of the relationship aren't erased. And my, and my therapist pointed out that I try to erase this person from my memory completely. And that's exactly what I've been doing, but that's not how 
humans work and human memories work, especially someone we're in a, you, we were in a relationship with. Because there's the emotional attachment, there's the, attach with the, there's the attachment we had to the person, um, the love that was shared, there's also the good times um, in, in addition to all of the bad stuff that happened. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. More like I invested very heavily in the relationship and then when it ended, it's sort of like I lost a part of myself and then the whole year, this year was trying to regain that, regain parts of myself, reclaim parts of myself, reclaim power. But the thing is, I've still been giving power to my emotions through self-punishment and this is, I'm going to get into this right now. The way my brain works is that it's very rational and whenever anything in my life happens whether i for say for example spill a drink or whether i made some sort of mistake with uh, the way i communicated something or something as bad as a relationship breakup i try to explain things i try to i i i basically pick apart everything that happened and analyze things in a very methodical way and then I try to justify or find some sort of explanation for the underlying causes of what happened and explain, oh, this likely happened because of this, this likely happened because of this. Or I theorize a lot about, and like, basically I, I like to justify things. I don't know if justify is, a, justify or explain things or sort of give logical ex logical reasoning to and I've definitely done that throughout the past year um, through therapy and support with friends and um, a lot of introspection reflection and working on myself and for example identifying different things that uh, didn't work well identifying things that worked well uh, things that I need my areas of weaknesses and things that the relationship has highlighted to me about me that need to be worked on, such as low self-esteem and also lack of assertive communication and neglecting myself and letting my boundaries be stepped on uh, and actually not even establishing many clear distinctive boundaries at all that I'm very, uh, feel very strongly about and very confidently uh, reinstate whenever a boundary gets crossed. Uh, for example, all those, those things, uh, those are things that the relationship has highlighted to me about myself. And there's a lot more, that's not an exhaustive list. Yes, I nitpick at everything and try to explain everything. And the reason I've been walking around with chains on my legs, like in metaf metaf metaphorical sense, with sort of believing that I haven't moved on by because I think about my ex and they cross my mind and I feel certain emotions whenever certain memories come up or when certain experiences replay in my mind, I feel certain ways and I try to logically explain things. For example, a few days ago before filming this video, I got hit with this intense like sadness and also I don't know if it was anger, it was like sadness and then resentment and like this longing, this, why am I doing this? I don't know why I'm doing this. This feeling of like sadness, resentment, longing, just loneliness and discomfort all mixed into one. It's just like, it was like a mood drainer and I just like felt very down and I was just like, I tried to rationalize it and it was very hard to because like, I was like, I was trying to explain to myself that, tell myself that it's been 13 months. I haven't had contact with this person. I logically know that it's not healthy for them to my, be in my life. That chapter of my life is over. Like the relationship has ended. I have grown from it. I have learned a lot of lessons from it. And despite trying to rationalize this, my logic and my emotions don't add up because logically I know that I'm in a much better place without them. I'm happier. I got out of a bad relationship. Um, I have healed. I have learned. Um, I'm not the same person anymore. Yet 
this logic doesn't explain why I why I feel all that. Like it's a there's a mismatch, and that throws me off because again I am very rational and I try to rationalize things and I find it hard to just sit with the emotions and accept it without trying to justify things. And in speaking to my therapist, he threw the question at me, can you accept what happened without justifying it or trying to justify it? And I'm just like, oh shit, like, no, I can't do that. Oh, I find it very hard to do that. Sitting with something without trying to justify it or explain it or throw logic at it. Um, and that's when it hit me that that's, that's the missing piece. That's the missing piece of this puzzle of why can't I, me believing that I, I haven't moved on and me believing that there is no closure when the whole time I've been locking myself in, the, in my own room in a very metaphorical sense, I don't literally lock myself in my room. Um, I've been locking myself up with chains and my feet because of being way too harsh myself for something that is very human. And I can't delete the memory of my ex from my head. And if I did, I'll clear out all the good memories and all the lessons as well. Because if I forget about them completely, I'll likely forget about all the lessons I've learned and the mistakes that I've made that I'm not gonna do again, then it just, I go back to being the same person I was a year ago if I erase this person from it and erase this person and erase everything that I shared with this person and everything that came with having this person in my life. If I erase them completely, then I'll lose everything else. And I'll, I'll rewind one year back to the guy I was before I started dating them. I have moved on and I, I am starting to fully close the chapter now that I have now that I have now that I have realized that I've been now that I realized the piece that I, um, is missing from this puzzle, I can start fully closing the chapter now and actually engage in future, future dating without feeling restrained and held back by what happened in the past. And it's through exercises that practice acceptance without judgment essentially acceptance without judgment acceptance without throwing logic at it and just letting it be and exist and let it float past when it's done because suppression of emotions do more damage than good it's like if I feel angry and I restrain myself from feeling angry, for example, or if I feel sad and I restrain myself from feeling sad and being like, no, you can't feel sad because you've moved on from this person, then it will come back to bite me in the ass later down the line from suppressing it. And it'll come out in a much, for me, it'll come out in a much worse way and it'll affect me in a worse way and it'll drag me down here in a worse way. So, for example, feeling sad and that mixed bag of emotions I mentioned before uh, about my ex and what I shared with them. It's just being like, it's okay to feel these emotions. It's, hu it's okay to be human. It's okay to feel these emotions, full stop. And just like let it exist and then it'll fly away once it's done. Um, basically, giving it space to exist we get without giving it power through trying to explain it and i encourage um all of you especially people who are like me who are very logical and try to explain everything through logic just practice sitting with things and it's it's not easy for me and it may not be very easy for you either but as we continue practicing, it will become our normal for lack of better words. And what was now, what in the, what was difficult in the past now becomes normal and very natural and second nature. So just sitting with the emotions, sitting with the thoughts too. For example, if I have the thought about, I miss what I shared with my ex, then just letting that be, not being like, oh, you shouldn't feel this way or you shouldn't think this way because you've moved on and they're not a good person uh, for you, they're not a good person for you. 
et cetera, et cetera, instead of just letting exist. I miss what I had with my ex, even though it was a bad relationship, full stop. And letting that thought exist and sitting or sitting with it, letting it exist, giving it space to float around. And once it's done, it will just pass. Yep, and that's the missing piece I've been lacking this whole time. And the other thing my therapist and I discussed is, I mentioned it a bit in this video uh, early on, is I'm not the same person as I was 12 months ago. The guy right after the relationship breakup and the guy now, i.e. me, is not the same person. I'm not the same person as I was two months ago, three months ago, four months ago, five months ago, seven months ago, nine months ago, a year ago. So it's not fair to punish the version of myself back then that didn't have all of this hindsight information for actions that he chose to do and things that he did do in the past that he's not so proud of now. But the version of me back then didn't have all the knowledge I have now. So it's not really fair to punish an, an old version of myself with a future version of me that sees things in hindsight, if that makes sense. It's like, we're, we're not, it's not, we're not the same people. And it's like another example is like, I'm not gonna, we don't, for another example is, we don't punish our uh, two week old infant self for not knowing what one plus one is, do we? We don't, we don't think about, oh, when I was two weeks old, I didn't know what one plus one plus, oh my God, I'm so stupid. Like we don't think that because that was a very different version of us. We're in, we're in a different point in our life with different experience, different knowledge, different learnings from the world, our, our brains are at a different state, our bodies are at a different state. And that's the same with ad us as adults. We constantly evolve, we constantly grow, we change. The things that are obvious to me now about relationships were not so obvious to me the start of last year, mid last year, even late last year was not so obvious to me. But it's very obviously obvious to me now that I can see the full picture from a perspective that is not entangled within a bad relationship. Yeah. In terms of the body sort of anxiety and the nervous system anxiety and the sort of what's what my body feels, it can be signs to try and protect me because I have been in a bad situation before and anxiety can be a good thing to protect me from repeating the same mistakes. However, anxiety and fear doesn't have to take complete control of me. I can feel the anxiety be like, yes, I know you're here. We've been in a bad spot before but I'm coming into this new situation with experience and I have realized things from my past that didn't work out so well and I'm not going to repeat the same thing. And hypothetically, if I did repeat the same thing, I will bounce back from it a lot faster because it's not the first time I've been through it. It's like, for me, for example, like, getting a vaccine. If there's like three doses of a vaccine, my body's likely to take the worst, the first one a lot harder because it's the first time the vaccine's in my body. And then the second time, my body's already been, been exposed to that vaccine, that same vaccine. So it's better equipped to deal with the influx. And then the third time I get the same vaccine, my body is even better equipped to adapt to it because it's been exposed to that same vaccine two times. If that makes sense, it's like we're going in. We might we're going into a situation with a lot more experience than our past self has, and if our past self can survive the hell with less experience and less knowledge and not being aware of certain things that don't work and mistakes that are to be avoided, then our future self 
can definitely say our future self is better equipped to deal with whatever life or the future relationships or future dating throws at me or us. Yeah. I think that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching folks and I hope it helped you. I hope it helped you. I hope it gave you some insights. Um, maybe this video helped you figure out the missing piece in your life about closure and moving on. And I will see you in the next video.